Well, a few months ago, my university started a big and, of course, expensive project for the introduction of a new enterprise resource planning software module. The expectations are high. Finance and controlling wants to increase the compliance with international accounting standards. It wants to achieve cost transparency, drastically reduce transaction costs, and facilitate budgeting processes on all academic and administrative levels. Of course, it is planned to use and adapt standard software. There are excellent chances also that the project will succeed. ETH Zurich already has, since many years, a powerful computing infrastructure with a highly differentiated set of database systems for the administration of personnel, students, exams, teaching facilities, and research platforms. Moreover, there is a lot of in-house and external competence available for the project cutting-edge financial controlling, well-experienced programmers, professional IT supporters, a specialized consultant firm for the introduction of ERP software in public administrations. And of course, there is a powerful multinational software developer that does not want to fail this time while introducing its brand new software package. However, and despite this powerful coalition of competent project partners, the goals as they are formulated today will not be attained. They will be rather substituted by other goals, goals we do not yet imagine. The original targets will merely be achieved either by declaration, by redefinition, or by oblivion. I can already hear now, uh, how the project managers will be talking in a few years from now about many improvements of administrative possibilities the new system is providing. They will not talk, certainly not talk, however, about the original goals. ICT admin, the issue of this conference, is a mess. It represents a terrible mixture of potentials, promises, illusions, and achievements. ICT at admin was a mess when, it fir when the first computers were introduced in banks, airline companies, retail business, and public administrations in the 60s, and it continues to be a messy issue half a century later. That's probably the most important message we get from a history of administrative computing. I do not think, however, that this has anything to do with a specific lack of competence of computer specialists or the limits of what can be computed at a certain time, nor should we blame the notorious inflexibility of administrative personnel. On the contrary, I would argue that the messiness of ICT at admin is very deeply rooted in the overwhelming diversity and hence the richness of competence among stakeholders. And it is intrinsically linked with the challenges of socio-technical change. That is why the history of ICT at Admin is an excellent showcase for the conditions of socio-technical change in general. Now, back in the 1960s, there was this exciting promise to get rid of the most disturbing administrative problems by sending them into the womb of a calculating machine. The perspective to move all the boring bureaucratic routines of this world into a computer was simply breathtaking. It felt like the finally achieved transition from an era of administrative manufacture into the future of a highly automated or even industrialized bureaucratic body. Transferring administrative tasks into the computer could be conceived as a substitution process, both of old hardware and of unnecessary staff, by the marvels of a cutting-edge technology. Just replace mechanized tabulating machines with digital computers and fire some pers personnel, and we are ready to go. 
However, managers and officers who bought a computer in order to cope with a growing and differentiated workload were forced into an unprecedented analytical exercise long before they could think about firing personnel. Sooner or later, they realized that buying and programming a computer was not the final solution, but merely the initial step for the production of new problems that had to be analyzed and eventually solved under hitherto unknown conditions. The acquisition of a computer came along with a refreshing coercion to think, as Nicholas Luhmann stated back in 1966. Let me just mention one example. In 1968, when the pharmaceutical enterprise Sando installed a brand new Univac 1108 at their headquarters in Muttenz, it wanted to increase the power and capacity of a four-year-old Univac 3 in order to run a bigger variety of processes in its computing center. However, it took quite some time until the installation could be presented to the public without shame and trouble. As one project leader explained in November 1969, I quote, due to the manifold possibilities of this large-scale plant, which forces its users into a new type of thinking, it caused us quite a headache during the transition phase. Sando not only wanted to use the calculating power of the machine for numerical methods in chemistry or for operations research purposes, its far-reaching goal was to use one single computer for the management of all its warehouses located at different places in town and to maintain at the same time the documentation of its entire research, development and patent divisions. For Sando, in other words, buying and programming a computer for administrative purposes meant to translate well-established routines and to design new procedures by redistributing the organization's complexities. An interpretation we also find in many other comp companies and public administrations. This is the reason why putting the administrative world into the computer requires, now and then, the allocation of a considerable amount of analytical power and why the original goals have to be changed during the course of any ICT admin project. Wherever the implementation of computers should lead to a new kind of efficiency, system analysis, project managers, equipment vendors and executive boards board members had to reach an exceptional level of cooperation. They have to harmonize or supersede functional units and well-established processes and to come up with newly designed procedures. Moreover, they have to secure a smooth interaction between the existing infrastructure and the future technological framework they want to develop. Hence, the fundament fundamental limits of an ICT admin project are not really depending on the speed of calculation, on the consistency of code, or on the availability of memory, as computer salesmen usually claim. These constraints were only what managers would far too readily accept as the enabling or limiting factors for their projects whereas hardcore technicians might have claimed that the project's failure or success depended on an organization's relative degree of cooperation. Surprisingly enough, technicians tend to underline their arguments with organizational issues, while managers like to throw in arguments that stem from technical boundary conditions. During the 70s and 80s, Computer specialists got acquainted with the fact that new computers always had to substitute some kind of all the systems and routines. That was the time when engineers or sales managers learned that there is no shortcut, sh shortcut for arriving 
at the one encompassing and far-reaching solution which, transfer, which transfers organizational complexity all at once into the computer. Organizations are a powerful means of dealing with complexities only if they maintain a sufficient degree of internal complexity. However, this internal complexity cannot be reduced you cannot make sure it disappears. It can only be shifted from one division to another, from one procedure to the next. Com complexity as such then will never appear, disappear, excuse me. Hence, dealing with administrative complexity by installing a computer system implies a profound rethinking of the complexity distribution within an organization. Computers have never been simple accelerators of administrative procedures. They have always been networking machines whose architectures are concerned with the core issues of an enterprise or in our organization. That is why ICT and admin projects have always forced their designers and future users to invest into the exploration of unknown problems and to think about new forms of cooperation long before any user will have a chance to interact and cooperate with the redesigned computing environment. Cooperation, however, this we might learn from sociology, is very difficult to achieve in general, and it is even less likely to happen than the development of error-free software and protocols. The most burdensome problems in ICT at admin projects arise when it comes to the elaboration of protocols that allow the handshaking of an organization's different procedures. Organizational cooperation requires a sound understanding of existing routines and a profound knowledge about the structure of future processes. I would like to argue that the required increase in cooperation was facilitated by the possibility to think about computers and administrations in terms of their structural similarity. The establishment of this analogy required a fundamental learning process, both in computing and in organizations. In the case of computers, managers, analysts, programmers, directors, and board members had to give up the idea that computing was the log logistics of data, so to speak, a, an, in an, an industrial plant with an assembly line that could be fed with raw data on the one side, and which then was transformed and aggregated until the res results could be printed and poured into tables. It was in the late 1950s and early 1960s that this simple model of early computing gradually become, became obsolete and was substituted by a relatively complex time-sharing model of computing. As Fernando Gorbato and his colleagues at MIT stated in 1962 when they described their experimental time-sharing system, there was an urgent need to drastically increase the rate of interaction between the programmer and the computer without large economic loss, and also to make each interaction more meaningful by extensive and complex system programming to assist the man-computer communication. Roughly at the same time, corporations as a special form of organizations underwent a fundamental conceptual transformation. The firm became something like an information processing body. Consequently, their administrations <coughs> were no more the downstream control and representation apparatus of a production site, nor a unit with cl uh, clean clock rooms where pale employees were shoveling dusty papers. Business, administration, uh, business administrators started to think of an administration as the information processing division of a company. 
which served the end of reducing transaction costs and protecting its internal information flow from market forces. In other words, it seemed somehow foreseeable that in the near future, companies could delegate their crucial decisions to the computed results and their administrative units. Sooner or later, not only corporate and public administration would be run by machines, but also their respective owners, that is, companies and political entities. The common denominator of their organizational setup, the form of their administration and the architecture of their computers was information processing in the service of corporate or public interests. Once the organization and the computer could be thought of in terms of an analogy or structural similarity, the difference between a digital and a social system became something that at least in principle could be handled with a sophisticated project management. The conceptual assimilation both of the operations of an administrative body and the procedures of a computer occurred within a field of iterative communications. In the case of a computer, this field was structured by operative systems, programs, protocols, and results. In the case of an administrative systems, system, these structures were known as laws, procedures, routines, and decisions, although the task to think about the implications of this equivalence remained remained quite burdensome. In order to take full advantage of the assimilation between administration and computing, ICT and admin projects had to first secure the careful translation of different users' purposes into programmable routines. Second, redefine the remaining problems in such a way that they could be either solved by the same body of software or be declared as irrelevant, ir irrelevant special cases. ICT and admin projects have to take advantage of the ICT and admin project had to take advantage of the momentum developed by a growing body of data that could be used in very different contexts. And finally, they had to learn that the newly programmed routines would not only increase an administration's productivity, but would rather require structural changes within the organization itself. Hence, the socio-technical assimilation of computers and organizations produced unexpected differences that had to be treated in learning processes with we commonly call projects. These differences, I presume, eventually became manageable, at least in successful ICT admin projects, due to an unexpected offer. Computer were, computers were not only fast calculating and they were not just stubborn, dull or patient machines when it came to routines. They were also offering the advantage of common goods. I would like to argue that it was the sharing of hardware, calculating power, software and data that was one of the most important means for cooperation simulated by computers since the early 1960s. Do I have a minute? Yes, you have. Okay. Even two. Even two, okay. Now, where did all this happen? What is the empirical background of my hypothesis? The course of the last few years, we have been able to shed light on many early ICT admin projects by asking how these projects managed to translate original administrative purposes into something that could be handled by computers and by doing so, they transformed organizations. I refer to Daniela Zetti's study on information technology and postal payment systems. Lucius Hausermann's work on computers and public administration, Katja Gierschek's book on computerized retailing, Hannes Mangold's ongoing project on computing and organizing federal police systems in West Germany, 
and I might also mention my own contributions to the history of relational databases or the history of computers in universities and banks. Recently, Josef Ecker has provided us with a report on such projects in a whole series of companies, among them Swiss Air, the Federal Railway System, and some industrial enterprises. <clears throat> All these studies show that ICT at admin not only meant translating existing purposes into new goals in order to be able to share computers and calculating time. ICT at admin also required the definition of procedural standards in order to enable software sharing or implementing standard software packages. It profited from the development of an information recycling culture in administrations that led to the technology of data sharing. And finally, we have come to the conclusion that the main organizational challenge of computer sharing, software sharing and data sharing never happened without, without the sharing of organizational competences. This means that ICT at admin always required a lot of admin at ICT. Thank you.